All right, so this um, little tutorial, we're just going to step through um, the process that you're going to use to set up a new team page. And we already have a number of teams in our, uh, in our sports management section. Uh, but we do new teams from year to year, and so some of them will be the same and some of them will be, will be new. So we'll go through the process of setting up a team page for an existing team that's already in there. And then if it's not in there, I'll show you exactly how to add a new team and add the logos and so forth. Um, some of this stuff is optional. I tend to go over uh, a little overboard. And I want to have the, the team logos on there. I want to have the team colors and everything and just have it be a real nice kind of experience. So um, anyway, just go to the website, log in as an administrator, and head over to the team section. You're going to pick your division and switch over into edit mode. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to be adding some rookies and uh, t-ball team pages. And cap night hasn't taken place yet, so you want to be very careful about if you're adding the stuff before announcements have been made, you want to make sure that the team pages aren't public. I mean, you may not even have the roster yet. Um, so it's just a good idea to, to keep this stuff uh, private until it's ready to be announced. Since um, cap night is only for t-ball and rookies, it's usually only those divisions that you need to worry about because um, by the time you receive the majors, minors, rosters, um, announcements have already been made anyway. So anyway, um, so we're, we're in rookies, and you can see there's no team pages underneath the rookies division. So we're going to add one, and we're going to make it a team page. And I'm um, just looking over at my uh, list of teams. I've got the Bingham, Bingham, Binghamton Mets. So I'm just going to take a look in here, and sure enough, I've already got that available. And as I said, I'm just going to leave the page status to disabled for right now. All right, so you can see that it added it. It's gray because it's disabled, and it didn't take us to the page so that we can go through and add in all of the team pages at once. Okay, so we're going to add a new team page. The next one I know I don't have is the Carolina Mudcats. So you can see in here, here's all the ones I've got. It's not in there. Yes, we can create a new team. And Carolina Mudcats. I always put the city in the full team name. I think it's just kind of more authentic. Um, the other thing that I do is I actually look for abbreviations. Now I've got a I've got a link to this MLB uh, timeline and abbreviations page. Um, the problem is I don't think that any of the minor league teams are listed in here, so it doesn't really matter that much. But I I um I like the team abbreviations at least for the major league um, teams to be the same as what you would go you know if you were at a game um, looking up at the scoreboard you'd see the same abbreviation so. Uh, we can just um, we can just fudge this right now. So I'm just going to do C A R. Now we don't know what the the colors are, and we don't have the logo. So I'm just going to I'm going to open a new tab, and I'm going to go over to SportsLogos.net. You probably want to bookmark this page because it has all of the every every team that you're ever going to encounter. There's there's going to be the the logos up there. You can just grab it. Okay, so Carolina Mudcats, I'm just going to use the search here. Mudcats. Boom. Okay. So other Carolina Mudcats logos and uniforms. What I really want is the script logo. And um, there's no... So usually at least for the major league teams, you're going to see a lot of the history of logos because they've been around for so long, and so you'll have some that are no longer current. In this case, um, I'm not sure if he was aware of when it ended, or or maybe it's, I don't know, usually it says like 1991 to present. But in any case, um, this script logo looks current, and this script logo looks current. This one includes the city name, this one doesn't. And you'll find um, that the more compact the logo, um, the better it's going to fit in the little space that they use to, to display it. So I'll show you that in a second. But uh, 
if you click on this, you'll get a larger size logo. And then from here, I'm going to save the image. Save it to my desktop. And uh, this is the Mudcats. All right, so now I'll go back over to here. Select that logo. Now, the other kind of crazy thing I do is I actually pull the team colors right off of the logo. Um, in this case, it's black and red, but you can approximate it. Um, I'm, I'm very anal, so I kind of go overboard on all of this stuff. And so I actually use a, a color digital color meter to measure the actual color, and I copy that to my clipboard. So when I set my primary color, and the primary color on this one, I'm, I'm going to just set to black. Secondary color, I'm going to set to the red. Now it matches precisely the logo that I'm uploading. All right, so this is a uh, rookie's team. So we want to make sure that we um, don't include the uh, team in standings because it's not scored. And we'll create the team page. All right, so now you can see the uh, team page. And you can see that my colors right here, the black and the, the reddish color, matches the logo uh, perfectly. And if we're looking at the page elements, the colors of the page elements also inherit those primary and secondary colors too. So it's just kind of a nice look. Um, now, what I do from here is I add the management team um, to each of the team pages. So that's the team manager, two of the coaches, and the team mom. And um, you can add them in whatever way you want, but I, I think that the most efficient way to do this is simply to edit the layout container here and make it a two column with the larger content area first and then a smaller area to the right. And I'll save those changes here. Now over here we can add in a contact page element and this will be, <clears throat> well I don't have any info right now so I'm just going to put team manager, manager, could fill this in after the fact and then an email address and the the nice thing about this contact page element is that the email address is not listed on the website you you can click a link and send an email to that person but it's not there to be scraped by some of these web crawlers and harvested for spamming and so forth so it's um, they, they store it behind the scenes and it's um, it's a safer way of posting that than just putting in a text area putting someone's email address so we'll create this page element. <clears throat> and then what I usually do is I'll copy that and I'll edit this. And this will be this will be the coach, or at least one of the coaches. And you'll save that change. Copy that again. This will be the secondary coach. And then copy it again. And then this will be the uh, team mom. Whoops. Team mom. And then, of course, put in the actual contact information for all these people and you're good to go. Now if you want to see how this looks in user mode just flip the toggle switch you're back to user mode and this is how it will appear to everyone else. Um, Alright so once you've got these T pages set up and you can see that I've got um, I've already set up a couple of them I I'm gonna go through and probably do the rest here. Um, we also need to add the rosters if you have them at the, at the time that you're setting up the team page. So you can set up the team pages first, come back and do the rosters later if you don't have the info. But generally, you want to go through and do the whole thing all at one time. So we'll, we'll go in here and um, we, you want to be in edit mode when you add a roster. So we'll flip the switch back over and then you'll see some additional buttons show up here. So under roster, we're going to add a player. And we can... We can do this a variety of different ways. Um, what we prefer to do is link the players um, from their registration to their teams. So uh, if you've got an engine login and you go in and you're registering online, you can see all of the history, all of the teams that your um, the, the kids uh, have played on and and eventually when they get up to minors and majors some of the team managers will be logging stats and those will all be linked to that player profile so it's a better idea to have them connected um, you don't have to and especially if um, if an, a, a registration was entered by hand um, 
at a walk-in registration on a paper form and the parents don't even have an email address, well, in those cases, you're just going to create a new player from scratch. We don't want to import players from registration. We want to add them from the network member directory. Okay. Um, so here's where you can actually do a search here. So I'm going to, I'm going to add my own kid. And so if I start typing his name, I'll get a, a bunch of matching names. Now, if there's a common name, you're going to have a very long list. If you can't fish it out, you might want to start with a last name instead because this search will search any part of a name, right? All right, so I'm going to pick my son's name. You have to put a jersey number in. You may not have it. Um, when you're creating the, the roster, it's okay. This stuff can be edited later if people care about it. And you have to have a position, so I always just check the catcher. Um, and again, if a if the team managers care to have this stuff, this the roster be accurate with jerseys and positions and all this stuff, they can go through and assign that stuff later. But this is good enough for now. So I save the player, and as I scroll down, you can see um, that, pers that the player has been added uh, to the team roster. So what happens if they're not in the network member directory? And in this case, um, if they registered at a walk-in event and the parents don't have email and it, and so there is no engine account the player won't be in the number network member directory in that case you'll just create a new one um, the email address is optional um, if you enter an email address here it's going to send an email invitation to um, that email address asking to claim this what they call an orphan registration and um, and then they can manage and, and see the the player history as they uh, as they continue on throughout their uh, little league career here with Allied Gardens. So in this case, I'm just going to do John Doe. I'm going to, again, the same thing, jersey number, catcher. I just do it quickly to get the, the roster filled in. <clears throat> Down the road, people can add a, a player photo and do all kinds of things um, to, uh, to fill out that roster a little bit more. But uh, all we're concerned with is, is the names. So that's it, really. Um, so you're going to go down the line here and, and add the teams in, fill out the rosters. We'll worry about game schedules later. Um, we'll do an import from the scheduling software that <clears throat> excuse me, will hopefully take care of all that stuff for us. So um, if you have any questions, uh, please contact your information officer, info at aglittleleague.org. Thank you.